Hello, this is Pat Cahill from Pat Cahill Metalworks, and today we're, it's been a long time, but we're going to finish up on this uh, reticulated silver a cuff bracelet. And I found a really nice stone, a nice sugar light, it was really jimmy. Uh, it fits just nicely there. I wanted to take advantage of this flat spot that we didn't get a lot of reticulation, so that will we'll be able to set a bezel on there quite nicely. So, let's get started. What I'm going to need, bezel wire, and the normal stuff, solder, <clears throat> and then the plate. I'm going to put plate underneath of this. And the first thing is to do is to determine what size length of bezel wire we need to fit the stone. And as always, I just take a piece of one-sided stick mailing label tape is what it is and I just go around the stone and as soon as I have it matched up I'll make a little mark there that's probably not the thing you want to mark with here and we'll just mark where they meet and then I'll cut that and check it and then we'll know what size length of bezel we need to fit perfectly around the stone that's good so take it off put it somewhere uh, I'll put it right here. And now I can get my bezel ready. So I'm using fine silver. And what I'm going to do is use my miter jig so that I have a very nice straight end to the, uh, the piece, and we'll bring you over here, and that's just filing away. The end, and then I'll, then I'll sand it. See how the, the tone of the file changes? That's when you know you're flat up against the surface. And then you just move to the sand to get rid of the, uh, the little burrs on the sides. And make sure that everything's nice and straight. So that's nice. I'll take that out. And... I'll measure it. This particular bezel came in coiled. I don't really like coiled. I like to get them straight, but there's not too many places that have bezel for straight. Hoover and Strong is one of them. Okay. So I have my mark. I'm going to snip off the excess close to the mark but not on the mark so right there I don't know if you can see the mark but I'm just gonna snip it off and we'll put this away for another project So now I want to straighten out the other end. Again, I'm going to use my miter jig. Put it in there right up to the mark. Make sure it's resting firmly on the sides 
of your miter. And then we're back over here, filing. See, that's, that's the sound of the file going against the silver. As soon as it starts, it gets all the way down, it'll change tone. So listen. See? Alright. Seeing that? And we're ready to uh, solder our vessel. Okay. Just a little uh, flashing on the sides or just a little bit of... But we take care of that over... Just rubbing it with your fingers to come right off. It's just very, very thin pieces. They're left behind. So. To make our bezel, we want to make a our D shape. So, well, I'm using my hands now, but typically I use uh, a pair of pliers. I don't see the ah oh, yes. With uh, these ones have plastic or on the, on the side, so you should at all mark your silver. So both sides, I just make a thing, and then come around to make a D shape. And as also we used to fiddle a little bit, so we get that perfect. So there we go, and that's ready to solder. So let me bring out my solder station, and I'm gonna have to turn on my torch. Get it all ready for soldering. So let me stop here, break here just to get the torch up and going, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm set up for soldering, and I take a piece of hard solder and I put it right below the seam. Right like that, and add a little liquid flux, and I'm ready to solder that joint together. I'll just heat the whole piece. Oh, there we go, and it's load and we have a nice joint so this really doesn't this fine silver so it really doesn't need to go in the pickle but I'll put it in the pickle anyway just for a second because what I want to do now and one should always do this and I sometimes forget and then I then I'm in trouble is to measure the stone so you so that when you do put it up for sale, you know the exact measurements and the carat weight. So, and this should be done in millimeters. So that's 30 millimeters. And by... Seven point five seven. So thirty by seven. And another tool that's nice to have is a good scale to weigh your stones. And I'll put it on, I'll tar it, make sure it's in uh, carat weight. Tar, bring it down to zero. And then throw that on. And we get 7.8. 7.8 carats. OK, 
Okay, so you have that. Like I say, it's uh, it's good to have. It's almost mandatory. When you're selling, you need to give accurate um, descriptions of what the stone is, what it weighs, what's its size. So we have that now. So let's clean up just a little bit. Get our piece back out of the pickle. And we're ready to form it. So the first thing you do is to round it off. Bring it over the camera over here a little bit with a ring mandrel. I push it down with my fingers. It's almost good enough to do it just that way. Um, and then use a soft hammer. Again, plastic. And go around. So you get rid of any of those like D marks that I had in there when I bent it to form a nice joint. And right here on the solder piece, you can either wait and do this later, which is probably the best way to do it, so I'm going to do that. Or you could try to clean it up a little bit, but I would suggest that you clean it up if you're going to put the, the bezel directly on the piece. And if you're going to put a base plate on it, then I say clean it up later. And I'm going to put a base plate on it. So I'm starting to just, just squeeze it a little bit because this is a long, thin stone, which I put away in its bag after I marked it. And then we're going to slowly try to form the bezel around the stone. And take your time. Do it properly. If it uh, looks a little small, this does look a little small, but that's because it's not formed to the stone just yet. And as you form it to the stone, you'll be taking out some of the slack here so that you can bring it all the way around. And I can see where this, it's not really meeting the, um, the stone. So what I can do, is take a burnisher and sort of burnish it down so that it mates with our stone. That will allow more room to um, fit the stone in. And if it's still too small, which it might be, we're going to have to hammer it just a titch on our ring mandrel so that it fits, but I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, that looks good. Fingers are always in the way, but can't work without my fingers. And that looks pretty good. It's way too high for the bezel, but that's okay. We'll take care of that. We're we'll sand it down. And I do have one that's not too bad, but I feel that uh, right there on our joint we have some solder on the inside. It's making it protrude out, so probably need to file that a little bit with a uh, very fine file. And you see, I'm just taking that down to get rid of that. They're really not much of a blob, but it's a little bit of a blob. Okay, that looks good.
I'm not touching the outside blob because we'll take care of that when we put on the base plate. I think I said that before though. Okay. And then fit it again. And that fits nicely. That's good. Okay, so the next step is to put a base plate on that, and I'm going to get ready for that, and I'll bring it back when I'm ready. Okay, so I have the base plate. I just found a piece of, uh, I wouldn't say scrap, but a little piece of metal that I could use. Um, it's 22 gauge. It'll fit nicely on here. And the only thing I need to do is two things. One is I need to make a nice flat contact between the two and that involves some sanding and also I need to decide how high I want the bezel and I think this is a little high so I'll be taking care of two things by just sanding it a bit so I'll just take some fine sandpaper and do my figure eights and this will make it nice and flat. Should match the uh, mate with the uh, base plate quite nicely. And I want to do this on both sides. I'm not sure if it's necessary to do it on both sides, but I like to. at an awkward angle so it's hard for me to do my circle my gate. Alright so you just want to keep doing this and then checking it. Don't go crazy before you check it. You can take off too much. That looks better. I might want to go just a little bit more. I think that's good. Good. So let's check to see how it fits on our base plate. We'll put it on the base plate and see if there's any light gaps coming through. I don't see any. You can bring down your. I don't think that this will help you, but. <laughs> Just check it. Make sure that it's meeting, mating with the base plate perfectly. And that looks good. So I'm going to set up to solder it. And because I'm going to be taking away the edge on the outside, I'm going to put the solder on the outside. If I was going to leave an overhang, I'd put the solder on the inside. But I'm not going to leave an overhang, mainly because I want to try to keep it as thin as possible for the cuff. As the cuff gets all rounded, and you want to have a nice contact. So the more, the wider it gets, the tougher it gets to get a good contact. And there are ways around that, but uh, we're not going to go into that today. Okay, so. Let me get ready to solder it and uh, bring it right back. So I fluxed it and then I put some solder chips around it and I'm ready now to fire. As always the chips are going to bounce around on you and you might have to replace them. They don't always bounce around on you but if you have wet um, solder than they will. And I'm just going to replace this guy right here. Okay. You need to snuggle up your solder chips to the edge. 
if they cool down, they're going to stick to the, the flux, so you're going to have to eat it up in order to move them. Good. Yep, it's done. Got a nice solder seam all the way around. We'll put it in the pickle and we'll be off to the next thing. So the next step is going to be to um, pretty up the sides of this bezel. And then it's um, form our bracelet and solder the bezel onto the top of the cup bracelet. So I'll be back. Okay so it's out of the pickle and my next step I'd like to do is I'd like to actually set um, these plastic things um, inside so it protects the bezel because the bezels it's it's pretty delicate you know it's fine silver can be warped very easily especially when you're trying to go around the outside and clean it all up so there's a lot of names for it one is jet set I can't remember the name of this stuff but you just plop it in a some boiling water or hot water let it sit for a little bit and it will get nice and gooey and uh, then we'll just push it in there and we'll have protection for our bezel when we're working on finishing the sides. So it looks pretty good. All right, so let's just take it out. Put it on our paper, or our cloth, sorry. It's a polishing cloth. Put this aside. And then you can just sort of form it with your fingers and then push it in Remove excess if you don't need. You got quite a bit of you got some time to work with it, so alright. All it is is just pushing it in while it's nice and malleable. Okay, so that's mostly done. Well it is done. And then I'll just put it in these clamps and Ramp them down. Actually, that's a little, I don't have a lot of room to work, so let's do it that way. And if you didn't have this protected inside, you could very easily warp the bezel. So now it's just a matter of filing. This is just a rough filing. Okay, so that's all been um, filed, not you know roughly. And now I'm going to take a um, sanding. I don't know what they call it, but and I should show you how to make these things because they're very useful for many applications. But we're just bringing over here, and this is where you want to take your time and be careful. And just go along to the uh, the seam where the base plate connects to the bezel disappears. There is the um, the end. You can see that, and then we'll just keep going around and doing the same thing. And if you feel like you need uh, new sandpaper, these little rolls, sandpaper rolls, you just tear off a portion, 
and you have a nice new surface, sanding surface for uh, your, your work. So I'm going to do this off camera, finish this up, and I'll come back and show you the results. Okay, so our bezel's done. I checked it to make sure it fit the stone. Didn't really push it in there really tightly. I want to be careful with that. There are things you can do. People suggest putting like um, dental floss below it so that you can pull it out. Or you can use uh, this sort of sticky gooey stuff that you just push it on and, it, and then it holds pretty tight so you can pull that out. Of course you gotta wash your stone afterwards but small price to pay. All right, so the next step is to form our cuff, and I'll get set up on the, the cuff forming mandrel over there, and I'll bring you right back. Okay, so here we are, and as always, start with the edges. With this uh, reticulated silver, it's, it's a little bit harder to uh, bend. So, just be aware of that. And you really can't... You really can't anneal it. Alright, so that's what we do. We form our C. And then, using our hands, we bring it around. And I start out on the small one, although it's, it's it's not made for the small one, it's made for this one. So then I move over here. And finish it up. Okay, there's our cup. Okay, so here we are back. It's just going to be soldered right onto here. I'm going to sweat solder it. And that looks like a pretty good fit. You can see a little bit of... Eh, no, it looks pretty good. Alright, so... You've seen me sweat solder quite a bit, but... It never hurts to go over things. So, take the bottom. I roughed up the bottom just a little bit with some fine sandpaper. Put on my flux. And then add a bunch of uh, soft solder. Again, you only want to use soft solder on really hidden joints for things like sweat soldering. Things that you'll never see. Because it won't match the color. So. In other words, you don't really need as many of these solder chips on as I have. I'll so slowly warm up the whole piece. And what you see as we go on, these things will ball up, and then, yeah, and then trying to make it so that it's all the way to the edges. Okay, so now we're ready to solder that onto the cuff. Which is a little bit tricky because the cuffs, the, the cuff is like 10 times more sober, 10 times, probably 100 times more sober than the mass of the bezel. So, one will want to um, concentrate your heat 
on the cuff itself and only at the very last minute bring it up to um, the bezel. So I put down some flux. This thing really didn't need that much pickle, so I'm not going to worry about it. And one thing you is nice to do is to take the bottom that you just put the the soft solder on and just give it a little bit of a sanding. Gotta make it flat. And we'll also expose the um, clean nice solder. Okay, make sure you have it all aligned properly. Looks good. I think I'm going to switch my tip to my, um, my big guy. As I said, I'm going to basically heat up the cup. Not even going near the bezel at first. I think that's done. What we got? So that'll go into the pickle. It's actually sometimes hard to get this off here. Let's turn it upside on its side, and then we'll quench it and pickle it. All right, and I'll be back. Okay, so here it is, basically. All soldered on nicely. Um, just pop the stone in. I don't think there's an orientation of it. Uh, if it's nice. Alright, so then we'll just set that stone. And I'm going to oxidize this because I want to bring out the dendritic nature of the um, of the surface. It's just, you know, It'll really bring it out to look nice. Make sure that's popped in good. That looks good. It's basically, well, that's where we're at right now. So I'm gonna set this stone. You've seen me do that many, many times. I'm just gonna go all the way around, set my bezel nice. I'll bring you right back. And then we're gonna go and do the um, liver of sulfuring. Okay, so I'll see you in just a bit. So I decided to oxidize it, as I originally planned, and uh, yeah, I'm happy I did. It really, really shows up uh, the reticulated silver. And it also is, is a nice contrast with the sugar light. Um, sugar lights are getting quite rare nowadays, and they're pretty costly, pretty pricey. There you go, though. Here's the finished product. It's uh, it's a pretty pretty cool cuff. Very nice, if I have to say so myself. So thanks so much for watching, and I hope I see you again sometime. Goodbye and thank you.